Hello, my friends, and welcome back to my channel. It is Wednesday. It is time for my weekly weigh-in and the weight loss meeting topic. Technically, I am still a WW Lifetime member at Goal. I'm not quite following WW at the moment. I am counting calories. It's just working for me right now. Um, I have not tracked WW points in a while. I was thinking about going back to double tracking just to, I don't know, for giggles. We'll see. But anyway, first things first, and that is my weigh-in. I was expecting a really decent loss this week. Um, I feel like I had a really good week and got a lot of movement in, and I lost point two. Now, before you say a loss is a loss, I understand that, and I am fine with that. Fine with it. I was just expecting, I was expecting a full pound this week. I really, really was. So I was a little bit disappointed, but a loss is a loss. Point two is a loss. Um, I'm not quite sure what's going on. I, I, I don't know. Um, it's definitely frustrating a little bit, but I'm almost starting to feel like this is where my body is comfortable. And no matter what I do, this is where my body wants to be. So I'm kind of exploring that a little bit. Um, I don't have a nutritionist appointment for, actually I have to get a, I have to get a new nutritionist. Mine left the practice. Um, I moved like far away. So I am in the hunt for a new nutritionist and I really wouldn't have had an appointment for a couple months anyway. So exploring that. Um, but yeah, so down point two, which like I said, a loss is a loss. I am happy about it. I was just expecting a little bit more. So not gonna let it bother me. Just gonna keep doing what I'm doing. And let's get to the weekly topic. The weekly topic this week is, week is how to get support from non-WW members or people that are not on a wellness or weight loss journey. I'm gonna take a sip and put this down. I haven't had any tea this morning. I am drinking a vanilla chai tea this morning from my the little tea shop out in Lidditz that I like. Okay, how to get support from non-WW members or people not on a weight loss journey. Sometimes life or even the people in your life can crimp your healthy habits or routine. Boo, but we know they don't mean to. Tap these hacks to get friends and family to help. Try this. Ask for inspo. House guest with a sweet tooth? Kids on summer break who love ordering pizza? Make diet size versions of their favorites. So instead of maybe like today, I'm going to make zucchini bread because we have zucchini coming out our ears and my family really enjoys zucchini bread and I enjoy giving it away as gifts. But maybe instead of making a whole zucchini bread that it's easy to take a little slice, even if it's a diet slice, every time I walk past, maybe what I will do is turn that zucchini bread into a mini mu or muffins or mini muffins that are a little bit easier to portion and I can just put the rest in the freezer. Maybe I will make mini loaves. I'm not sure, but I could do something like that. Now for me, since we started our whole foods journey, I don't use any um, like um, artificial sweeteners or anything like that. We do use real sugar, real maple syrup and things like that. So for me to, swap those things out, not an option. I could swap out the oil with applesauce and things like that, but I won't substitute any artificial ingredients for real ingredients. So for me, I can't reduce things like that, but you could definitely do something like that. Or, you know, it says about the kids ordering pizza. Make pizza at home. 
and control the amount of cheese, control the amount of pepperoni, control the type of dough used, things like that. Plus it's gonna save you a lot of money and you know what's going into your food. You are using the foods that you, the ingredients that you feel comfortable with. Or if you are ordering from a pizzeria, don't order the large pizza. Order a personal pizza, order a medium pizza, order what you know will get eaten at that time and then you won't be tempted with the leftovers. Order just by the slice and order just one slice for yourself and one slice for the kiddos or something like that. There are definitely ways of doing it so it's not an abundance of food. And then it says move together. Suggest a post-walk dinner instead of TV or plan a bike tour on your girl's trip instead of a boozy brunch or another afternoon by the pool. You know how I feel about movement, my friends. You know how I feel. And I'm going to be honest with you, the last couple of weeks, I haven't gotten a lot of it. Um, I've talked about it before. I have arthritis in my hip and um, I also have a few knee issues with my right knee and I've been feeling it a lot lately. I've taken steps to combat it. It's doing much, much better. So I am back on a really great exercise routine, but I was really um, slowing it down for a while. I was just doing a lot of stretching and a lot of yoga and things like that. Not necessarily what I like to do, but now that I'm feeling better, now that I've controlled the pain a little bit um, through different exercises and through some therapy that is through our insurance, I feel much better. So I've ramped up again and I'm just going to listen to my body, but you, you have to move and you don't have to move to lose weight. You have to move for your health. You have to move to keep your muscles strong, your heart strong. Your heart is your biggest muscle. You have to move to keep that strong. You just have to move to keep your body going. You've heard me say it a million times. A body in motion stays in motion. A body at rest stays at rest. So just move a little bit. You don't have to go run a marathon. You do not have to run an Ultraman. You do not have to do 50, 50 60 minutes of cardio a day. Just go take a walk. And every day, just walk a little bit further. That's all you have to do dance, jump, do whatever it is you like to do. Just do it. And then it says, pay it forward. Find ways your healthy routine can help a loved one, like prepping extra veggie sticks for a snack loving spouse. This is a big one. Um, I am very blessed and lucky in the fact that my family will put what eat whatever I put in front of them. They are not picky eaters at all. And I can make the healthy dishes. We can have two and three vegetables as a side dish. We can have the lean proteins. Um, I love to cook. I love to cook. I love to make delicious food from scratch. And when I say from scratch, if you're new here, I mean from scratch, like I make mayonnaise. <laughs> I like to know what's going in my food. I like to know what is going in our bodies. So I like to make things from scratch. And not to be, not to be conceited, but I'm a pretty good cook. Um, personally, I think anybody can cook. If you can read a recipe, you can cook. I truly believe that about everyone. I just don't think we have the confidence to do it sometimes but that's a whole nother story. Get the confidence and just try it. Just do it. Um, but like, you know, with your family, just start making substitutions. Um, you know, maybe use a little less butter in a sauce. We're a saucy family. We love sauce. We love sauce. But a lot of times the sauce is laden with a lot of butter, a lot of oil. So many times you can just cut that amount, not cut it out because we need those foods in our diets. We need those healthy fats, those healthy oils. And you have to get them somehow, so it's a good way to get them. But 
nine out of 10 times, you can reduce the amount that is in there. You can trust me on that one because I do it now. Um, and, and make little swaps. Like instead of putting, you know, sausage and bacon in their omelet on a Saturday morning, throw a couple veggies in there and serve two strips of bacon on the side. Gradually make the little swaps with your family to get them healthier. Because what is the point of you being healthy, my friends, if your whole family is not? Take a look around. Take a look around at your family and realize maybe that you need to help them as much as you need them to help you. Um, you know, sometimes we learn those things a little too late, but look around. I never want my children to struggle with their weight like I struggled with my weight, but unfortunately, I have one that struggles with their weight and one that does not. We can suggest, we can help, but that's about all we can do. We can prepare the food for them, but that's about all we can do. Um, you know, especially when they get older, you can't help that Taco Bell run or that Wawa run or things like that. And is it frustrating as a parent? It is, but we can only do what we can do. So if your kiddos or your grandchildren or whoever are young, and you see them going down a path where you know you've been there, you have weight problems and things like that, nip it in the bud. Stop buying them the crap. Encourage them to eat healthy. I mean, all we have to do, honestly, is look around at our generation and we know what the next generation may be facing. And we don't want that for them. We don't. So really think about that and think about how we can help our family through our journey. It says set an example. That's kind of what I just talked about. Suggest splitting a veggie packed app or entree when dining out or take your kids shopping to pick out fruits and veggies. Set that example. I wish I had set that example when my kids were younger. I really truly do. Um, but live and learn and know better and do better. And that is what we are doing. So let your kids see you eating the healthy foods. And I'm not saying all you can eat is vegetables, but teach them how to read labels. Teach them the things they should be avoiding, avoiding the seed oils. And I know that's tough for a kid because every fun snack has seed oils in it. But when we educate them when they're young, they'll learn about it and then they won't want to eat the Doritos and the Fritos and this and that. And I'm not saying not to have them once in a while. I am never saying that. But I see kids every single solitary day in their lunch, they have Doritos or Cheetos or potato chips every single day in their lunch. And I'm sorry, my friends, you can disagree all you want, but it is not necessary to have that stuff every single day. Those are treat foods. They're treat foods, but we're giving them to our kids every day. We're giving them fruit snacks and gushers. What is in those? 100% sugar, but not even good organic cane sugar. It's corn syrup. Corn syrup. Full of GMOs and the leading cause of obesity in children is high fructose corn syrup. And we're feeding them to our kids. We're feeding those things to our kids that have artificial dyes in them that are banned in other countries. Yes. Red dye 40 and yellow dye 3, I think it is. I don't know. Whatever they are. They are banned in other countries. And we are feeding them to our children here in the United States. We're a bit backwards, my friends. We really are. For being such a progressive and intelligent country when it comes to our food we suck yep was i always like this nope nope no better and do better um so you know just start teaching your kids that let them know that you know this might not be the best choice to have every single day it's a once in a while treat trust me i wish I wish I had done different when I was younger and I wish I had done different, you know, some different things with my kids, but 
know better and do better. It says, talk it out. Be open about how your people can help you, like finding restaurants with low-cal, low-point, healthy options or leaving snacks out. You know, I always tell Doug, like if we're going somewhere, I'm like, feeling a little weak today, buddy, be the food police. And he will. And I'm asking him to do that. He is not being mean to me. He is not um, lording over me. I'm asking him to keep me in check. You know, and, and ask your family, especially if you have older kids, like keep your snacks in your bedroom. If they're not 100% on board with you, keep things out of sight. If you're gonna eat junk, eat it out of the house. Now, I know you can't do that with young kids, but they're young and you're the one controlling what they're eating. So you can have control over the young ones. You cannot bring the stuff in the house. Just keep thinking, do I want my kids to struggle like I have struggled? Do I want my grandchildren to struggle like I have struggled? And if the answer is no, then maybe stop buying the crap. Stop buying the treats. Stop buying the treats for everyday consumption. Once in a while, a donut is not going to hurt them, but a donut every day is. Once in a while, I don't know. I can't even come up with something right now. Is not going to hurt, a Lunchable is not going to hurt them, but every day it is. Once in a while, Cheetos are not going to hurt them, but every day it is. Look back at your own struggles and don't pass them on. Yes, there are some things that are hereditary, but mostly what is hereditary is a bad diet. So nip that now while they're young. This kind of went uh, in a whole opposite direction, but it's just something that's been on my heart for a while. So then it says, make a plan. Who you will involve in your journey, the strategies that you will try, and how and when you will do it. Imagine this. All spring, you've been prepping meals, getting in your steps, and staying within your calorie or points budget. Now it's summer break. Your kids are home, along with their friends, and all the snacks and all the pizza. Your sister's visiting, and you're going to parties, and you're going on a girl's trip. If you're off your game, it's not just you. The people you spend time with are part of your environment and your environment plays a big role in what you do. So when the routines of those around you change or your interactions with them do, it can interfere with the routines you use to stay on track. Instead of fighting it, here's a fix. Involve them in your journey as you adjust to the new or temporary circumstances or routines. Research even shows that when who you get the most support from, research even shows those who get the most support from family and friends lose more weight than those who get no support. You can't control what others do, but chances are they'll want to help you. Just show them how. You can't control what others do, but you can control what you do. You can't let outside influences stand in your way. If you have young kids or grandkids or whatever, you can control the food that comes into your house. If you have a spouse that is not in the same headspace with you when it comes to this, can you control him or her? No, but you know what? They're big enough where they can leave their snacks somewhere else out of your sight and out of your face. It comes down to your mindset, friends. It comes down to how much you want this. What is going to win out? You have to control what you can. And we can control a lot more than we think we can control. Are you making excuses or are you making a plan? Think long and hard about that. Which are you doing? Making excuses or making a plan? Because we can make excuses all day. We can make excuses all day, especially when it comes to having little ones in our home. You know, oh, I need it for them. No, you don't. They do not need to be eating that crap. I said it. 
They don't. They don't. If you don't start feeding it to them young, they're not going to know about it. Yes, eventually when they get to school and things like that, but you can start shaping them and ha not having them go down the same path that you're going down or that you have been struggling with all your life. Involve the people around you. Involve them in your journey and you never know what may happen with theirs. So that's it. This kind of went a little bit south, but it's just been on my mind forever and forever. And it just, I, I just feel like, I just want to shout from the rooftops. Like, let's stop doing this to our kids. Let's stop doing this to our kids. But anyway, that's what's been weighing heavy on my mind lately. This tied in a little bit. I know, I know. If you're still with me, thank you. Sometimes it just needs to come out. <laughs> so, and like I said, I'm not perfect. I am not perfect. I still eat crap once in a while. And it's once in a while. It's once in a while. It's going out for ice cream once a month. It's having chips on poker night once a month. It's, it's, it's not doing it on a continual basis. And let me tell you, the, the less you do it, you find the less you want to do it. So just try, just try, try to make things better for our kids than they were for us. Try to make their life so they are not struggling with their weight at 54 years old. Try to teach the good habits because, you know, and like I said before, just because you bought it at Trader Joe's doesn't necessarily mean it's healthy. And just because, you know, it says low calorie or whatever does not necessarily mean it's healthy. Just because it says sugar free doesn't mean it's healthy because God only knows what they put in there to make up for it being sugar free. So read your labels, think about it, bring your family in on this journey, teach your family well and be a healthy unit. Okay. I'm stopping now because I could go on for hours. Thank you for watching, especially if you got this far. And like, comment, subscribe, share if you know someone who needs to hear this. Leave a couple videos linked on the side. I will leave a couple videos linked on the side from some past topics. And that's all I have to say. I'm out of here. I'm going to go spill my tea all over myself. I'm going to go have my tea and get my day started, my friends. Have a great one, and I'll see you in my next video, oh, which will be a cook with me tomorrow, cooking from my collection. It was the Gilligan's Island cookbook.